down there and make it. And I do have three or four other short items, I hope, I'd like to address also. One, number four, your first job. Mm -hmm. yep. So first on is I'd like approval of uh, the May 18th regular board meeting minutes. Motion to approve those. Approve that meeting minutes. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. I'll abstain. I wasn't here. All right, we'll move down to. Uh, we need to excuse Danny, right? Yep. Yep. I'll make that motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, phase two wastewater treatment plant, uh, third amended and reinstated bond resolution. Does anybody have a copy of that? Basically, we're amending the bond resolution uh, in the amount of fourteen million nine hundred and twenty-six dollars three hundred and eleven dollars. Anybody got any questions on that? And why we're doing it or anything? We're amending that to the. That would be total, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's a new total. New Four, total. Fourteen million yeah. nine hundred twenty-six. Is that because of an increase in cost or stuff? Or? Yeah. Well, that's because of uh, originally you replace all the diffusers and aeration. Uh, the rest before it was only partial. Now it's right. that's what we just got bids back on. And, uh, originally, we thought that they were all going to be replaced in the original contract, but. As we looked at the contract documents, it wasn't. So it'd be beneficial for us to replace them all now while we're redoing everything. Well, we're into the project. Yep. And have them all the same, right? Correct. Yep. They'll be all the same, all brand new. Um, What's the lifespan on these things? No, no. On the on your back? <laughs> well, the ones that we have in there, we've replaced a few, correct, Joe? But what's what's the lifespan of them? I'm not really sure. I'm not sure. Either. I would that say Colin. Yeah, I would say he's the one that's always replacing them. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll make a motion that we amend the bond resolution to that figure of fourteen million nine hundred twenty-six thousand three hundred eleven. I will second that. Okay. That we have to do a roll call vote. Myself, yes. Tim Woodrick? Yes. Ed Murphy? Yes. Charles Trillian? Yes. Good on that. Summer wrap up again because uh, I have got nothing back from the county. I sent them a, another email uh, Monday uh, explaining what the new costs were and uh, how many children. And since 2017, we've averaged probably 50 children from outside the town and village of Lowell each year. Uh, and. Uh, and we sent that out Monday morning. I've heard nothing back. I called Dick Sharkman, which is one of the legislators, yesterday morning. He hasn't got back to me. Uh, I did find out last uh, the town does not want to split 
anything at all this year. They want to stick strictly at their 30% and no more. Uh, turns out, I guess, we were lucky, Randy, last year, basically took it on his own that we would split that difference. His board, according to Bob, knew nothing of it. And they don't, they don't want to split anything and they don't want to make any changes. Their philosophy is if the county doesn't come up with any extra money, which Bob's talked to, uh, he's got a call in the deck himself and he's also talked with Josh Liverker a little while that they figure we just take the summer off and uh, figure out how we're going to fund this down the road and not have it. Because if you look back at uh, where some of these people are coming from too, it's almost like we're providing free babysitting. Believe it or not, there's been people from Boonville, Carthage, Lorraine, Port Leiden, Lions Falls, according to Double Play's report that they give us. We, we've got to figure something out. I mean, obviously, we, we can't keep going on at those expenses. How, and I know you've not, the last time I talked to Dan, that day he just talked to you on it. But is there just, if we're talking of either having to slash or cut the program, would it be beneficial and, hey, invite the county, and if they don't want to partake in it, well, then that's up to them, but just have a meeting in the mind of all the interesting interested parties and that way we're not I understand we have to make a decision and I understand our hands might be tied if nobody else comes to play ball with us but we well, the thing is the thing is I knew this was going to become I started emails and phone calls with basically I talked to Dick Charter right here in uh, this office and he says contact Ryan, I explained to Dick what was going on. This was back in April, contact Ryan, which I sent Ryan an official letter, an official letterhead, and explained all the costs and everything. Dick Charter got a copy of that letter. Supposedly the two of them meet and met. Uh, I've had two or three emails back and forth to Ryan's office. I've heard absolutely nothing back. Uh, and I say Dick hasn't called me back. But if we go with the program the way it's set up this year, uh, the village's share is going to be $41,924.40. The town share is going to be $17,967.60. Refresh my memory, too. What, what's our committed budget? What's our, what's our, what did we budget for? Like 25? We went high this year. We put 45000 in. But you've got to stop and think. That's not strictly... Uh, summer rack because that also helps pay for the utilities and things uh, at the fairgrounds for when we do the skating program comes out of that 45,000 and this year alone when we got the bill electric rates were up and normally we pay between 75 and 78 hundred dollars a year and this year was well over I think it was 11 four something like that it took a wicked jump so normally uh, uh, like last year, our actual summer rep, this was when we split the other 10,000 50-50 with the, the town. Our actual the village's cost for summer rec last year was 31,475. And that's where I was trying to hold it this year when I was trying to get the town to, to split the difference with us. I was willing to, you know, go up 15, or they would go up 15. So that's why I'm putting it out to you. My thought is if we can't get extra funding, we should just take a year off and figure out how we're going to do this. But I'm thinking, you, you, you're you on the double board, but I would think Dan got to know now. I don't think he can wait until June to <coughs> answer, because he's got to hire people. Correct. Yeah. Uh, there's a meeting tonight. I won't be at, I've got a sectional baseball game, so I won't be at the meeting. I mean, I can certainly talk. What have you expected? Have you laid that out to him or he's un un he understands that? Or I haven't talked with, okay. with him just yet. That's me. why I was, yeah. no, I talked again this morning. I came thing. in early this morning and talked with Bob again just to make sure that where the town was at. That's why I'm telling you. That's where they're at. I've got some thoughts, but I don't, I mean, not anything that's a secret. I just don't want to commit to, or, you know, have 
other people to commit to stuff. So yeah, I think we need to think hard about it and maybe have a little powwow with everybody. And, I do uh, know Mike Young has put in for a grant, but yeah. uh, if he gets it, that's only going to be maybe three thousand dollars at the most. Well, is it better to trim some of this or, or just do away with it, you, you know? Right, I think it's true at the program, and I'm, I'm biased, but I don't care whether I'm on the double play board or not. I, I'm a product of this, this uh, program as a kid that's been going on. We've had some years off, I get that, the COVID stuff, and we've had years where well, we took the, yeah, that year of COVID we took off. Yeah, but it's, it's a very valuable, you're right, it's a babysitting service, so my fear is, what happens if that babysitting service goes away? Parents might have to step up and play the plate and should. Well, <laughs> when they're both working, and, yeah, it's, 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 I get what you're saying. No, I just it's, mean there's other, other uh, child care out there. Well, the question well, was whether you can turn that budget at all. Can you turn it at all by reducing the I mean, we could go back to those times. We could go back. Uh, we could go back to week or somewhere like that. You know, we right. still have the program just last week, but that's not my problem. I mean, yeah. I mean, I can get a hold of Dan and ask him if we go back to a four-week program. What my my guess is the last couple of years. Well, he's asking right. right. yeah. Better not than right. right. Correct. Right. Um, my personal opinion, whether it matters or not, I agree that the REC program is a great program. It's here in Lava. Everybody in Lewis County uses it as it shows from the data. The county needs to step up and help out. They keep telling everyone how much money they have. They can spend money for patrol, for or security for snowmobile. They can spend money for the snort run. They can spend money for that, but they can't give back to the community of Lalo for people in Lewis County for a rec program. That's pretty sad. They can spend all this money on a DMV building help out with a hospital here and there, but they can't give back to the community. Plus, they gave all the snowmobile clubs a thousand dollars. Yeah, and the snowmobile clubs get money from uh, registration, so it's not like they want. That's just my opinion. They're just, I realize they, they want tourism, but they need to take care of the local people that hear their actions pay the property taxes. I'm sure he could. I'm sure he would. I think he's on the, he would give us some CPR if he needed life support payment. Um, and I would echo what Paul said. I know, like I say, it's, um, and this is not an ideal idea, but if the county does not, um, and again, I'm not trying to blame anybody for it, but at that point in time, then maybe we should say, hey, when you're signing a thing, where is your residence when you're signing the kid up? And it's free for the town and the village residents, and it's not if you're outside, if there's no county share. That's, I, I'm not saying we got to go to that level. I'm just echoing what he said, thinking as he's talking about it, and that's. But your assessment is 100% accurate. Well, the county ought to answer some questions then. Yeah, instead of not answering emails or phone calls and stuff. And I believe Joe was telling me this morning, or somebody was, um, is it Beaver Falls that has the rec program, and they they actually charge ten dollars or one of those communities. They actually charge ten dollars a kid or something. So then I hate to say it, but you yeah, have to pay the phone. I mean because the town and village are correct paying for it. Correct. I'm not problem with that. Yeah. I hate to do that, or I hate us I to do that. I mean if, if you're calling it a babysitting service, that's a pretty cheap babysitting for ten bucks. But I think you, you can call it a babysitting that's, service, but that's right the kids are Monday. still, the, whether it's a babysitting service or not, the kids are still learning. I mean, they're with groups of people that are learning stuff there. And that's us as a board, we should look at that as, you know, a positive. The whole community should look at that as a positive. Well, if the whole county's involved, it should be correct. Well, the bottom line is we, we really can't decide anything that's today. Right. As a board, if we can't vote on anything, do you get something definite what we're going to do, right? But I just wanted everybody to know where we stand on that. So meanwhile, I can check with Dan and see what a price for a program would be. 
but I think we definitely got to make a decision on or, you know, uh, June 15th. Talk about what they said, you know, if you charge people from out of the, out of the town or village, a, a small amount, I don't think there's much to ask either, you know what I mean? But yeah, and, and Joe's original point is correct though, whatever we decide, whatever, probably you have a hard deadline to say, we have an answer from the county, I, the town's already spoken, I get that. Um, and then at that point in time, we move forward and figure out what we're gonna do. Shorten it, charge, a little of both. I, you know, I hate to say eliminate, but it's gotta be one of the options, but I don't, it's the last option in my mind. But I know Bob's reached out, and he's hoping to hear here in the next day or two, other legislators at the county also. So my thought is, I'll get a check with Dan to see what a four-week program would be, and uh, but I think on the June 15th board meeting, we definitely got to make a decision. Oh, yeah. Either we're going to have it or we're not. But I can't see the. What is the time frame? July and August. It's July. It's it's scheduled to start July 5th. Whatever that. Two, it's I think July 4th is a Monday, so it's Tuesday. It's we got basically a week, and then and it could be. I mean, if worst case scenario, if we shorten that, it could be shortened to start later, and then it gives everybody room to breathe and yeah. hire and but he's right i mean i hate to see a, a, you know i'm assuming he's got if he's bringing back i don't know what he's doing for staff but if he's bringing back a staff but if i'm a college kid and i'm 19 years old i want to know whether i'm working yeah. this summer i'll go to whetstone right. so there's a lot of yeah the time frame is getting tight well that's what he was looking for mom staff right there yeah and that's you know, maybe the program you know i can dig into it a little bit more and see what we can all right, we'll, we'll go that route then and I'll move on so I don't keep everybody. I threw this one in there on you, Paul. Disposition of surplus property. Down there at the sewer plant, we, uh, in the renovations there, we got a nice large overhead door that's maybe, might be five years old, that we're not going to use. We have no use for it. And I would like the board's approval to put that on. Uh, Declare it surplus, and then so we can auction it off and get something out of it before it gets damaged. Uh, I know the town just got rid of three that were in worse shape than, than this one, and they got pretty good buck for them this time of year. Is everybody I just ordered two new ones in there. That, cheap. You agree with that, right? Yes. Yep. I'd rather. So basically, it's a now large now overhead now. door that we want to get this position. Yeah. On our lower building, we actually, with the, with the renovations, we took out the overhead door and actually put a man door in it because we don't need the overhead door. So, and I have no use for it anywhere else. I'll make a motion that we put that, up for, that door up for surplus auction. All second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, fountain. What's going on there is the old fountain is down at the sewer plant. The one that's broke. The Historical Society, uh, Jonathan Miller's president of the Historical Society, asked if the Historical Society could have that. So I felt I couldn't just give it to them. That the board needed to make a decision if they. If, uh, we have no use for it other than scrap. And if they want it, to maybe someday possibly restore. It, I have no problem. What's it made out of? Uh, cast iron. Cast iron. Cast iron. Yeah. Yeah, we when we when the fountain broke, um, we actually got estimates on repairing that, and it was smarter for us to purchase a new one. So it's, and the insurance it's pretty expensive to, to uh, much cast new pieces and whatnot. So even if we gave it to somebody, are they going to come back on us though by giving them something that's broke? No, no, they, they know it's they broke. know it's broke. Right, but I mean, yeah, their plan well, is to right now. Jonathan mm -hmm. said we'll put it in storage. And he says, hopefully, maybe we can get a grant to read. Okay. I, I'm thinking they would like to maybe restore it someday and then install it someplace. But, but I just felt we needed to put something in our minutes and how we disposed of it. So down the future, anybody wants to know. So I just, you know, if you guys are willing, I just need a motion to let the historic Lewis County Historical Society have the old house. I'll make that motion as long as no strings are attached other than that. No. No second. Mm -hmm. All in favor? All right. Aye. The last thing I'll keep you here is uh, 
Juneteenth holiday. I don't know how many people have heard about that. Turns out it's a federal holiday now. It's going to start taking place uh, June, 19th. June 19th, but they will be observing it on June 20th. Uh, and my question to you is, uh, it's not in anybody's contract as a legal holiday for the village. Uh, but do we want to go ahead and let them observe it? I believe the post office and all those places are going to be closed on that particular day. I mean, it's something that could be, should be added probably in our contract down the road, but I mean, with us just coming up. And our, our contract is, uh, contract negotiations for DPW starts this year, right? Yep. So it is. Yes. But like the office staff and things, they have no contracts. So they just normally get the holidays. So. And they don't get a vote on it? <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to ask about it. Because I know the kids are out of school and stuff too, so when can they ask me? I really don't have an opinion on it. I know it's county not a Is the county closed? Or? No. Oh, they're not. Not possible. Right. I'm sure the state side probably will, you know, the state side probably will observe it. I don't know. I mean, and it's not on our contract either. It didn't make it into the contract. So. And I, I've not been in contract negotiations, so I'm not sure how stuff reads, but like, uh, I'm assuming that the next contract will probably will read. I think they get a voting nominee already. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But I don't have an issue. Often does, and I think they do, though, because they work certain. For suggestions, I guess. I'm sure Paul I don't think anything. How does he work? Your staff should be making a voting holiday form, or is it not doing it at all? Or? That's totally up to you guys. I, I think it would be a question, question. Yeah. maybe to the to the village attorney, you know what I'm saying? Should, should it be in the contract? Should it be a contract holiday, not just, I don't know. I, I think that's we can well, we can think we, we have a meeting on the fifteenth right. so we can make a final decision on that date. Well I think the way it is is we'll we'll decide or you guys will decide this year and then next year their contract will be up so I'm yeah. sure it'll be in there if it's yeah, a factor or not. One of the two yeah. Yeah. So that's kinda of the way I look at it, because that's kind of what happened to us. You know what I mean? Although they did Get a little more information and, yeah. and uh, make a final decision on the 15th. Uh, yeah. yeah. Couple That's other things, Joe. I don't, are you done? Yeah, yeah I'm done. Uh, we yeah. talked last at the last meeting about this community solar aggregate that you know this woman possibly would come here and, and you know before the board. I talked to her. Uh, her name is Alexa Lamb from that Jules uh, organization. She said the presentation would be like 20 minutes. And of course, you know, if you had any questions, it would be longer than that. Well, is that something we want to entertain at a regular meeting? Or do we want to do something special? Or she just meets with the board, or certain members yeah. of the board, even you know, without a quorum or whatever. Go forward on that. Do they have any thoughts how they'd like to do it? I know she has like a whole PowerPoint presentation Correct. that she can do, yeah. She did a report live in too. And she gives you like the whole packet of everything and stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's, I think it's a good presentation. I believe, I, I think I've already seen it uh, when she did it for the county. I think it was at the JCC Center. I mean, it was a good presentation. I mean, Does it involve the village a lot? Oh, yeah. Well, it can, put it that way. You have to have a certain percentage of the people in the village sign up for it. Correct. And then, and then you get like a discount based on how many people sign up, I believe. Right. And then yeah. you, if you reach that point, however many people that that is, you get like fifty dollars per household or something for the village against actually. Yeah, I don't know. We didn't look into it because I mean Fort Lauderdale is a lot smaller and yeah. has a lot of other infrastructure problems. But the percentage is but a certain percentage. I think it's you know it's worth at least 
part of the board looking when, into it. When do you think she will do that? She can do it in June, you know, or if that's too close, she can do it in July. You know? Or like I said, she could meet with just a couple of us and we would basically have a forum there and have like a special committee on it or something like that to report back. You can do it that way. She met in front of your full board then? No. Yeah. But I had nothing with her coming before the full board. I mean, especially going to 20, 30 minutes. But she said 20 minutes and if there's questions. Yeah. Yeah. I can get her to do it June or July. However you want to do it. I don't know if we want to set it up so she's right off the bat and gets done with it, you know what I mean, or at the end, or I don't know. Why don't we, you know, why don't we try to set up, a, does anybody have any problem with the July meeting? Yeah. I mean, one reason I, I know we're going to be doing, I know we're going to have some stuff here. I think we're going to be fairly busy with because of the construction projects in June, there might be more stuff coming up. I don't know yeah, what I'll do. Board. So I'm thinking maybe July will be a little calm. Yeah, but I'll get with you on the agenda and have it on the agenda. Like I said, we'll decide yeah. next month where we want to put her. Then, I guess probably. I would put her at the very beginning. Yeah, yeah I think yeah, that's, that's what we did too. This way she didn't, because I think after ours, she went to another meeting too. So yeah. I think she tried to like schedule more. Than more. Okay. Yeah, I like where we have the orders of the day. I'd put her right. right there. Okay. I'll get back to her then. One other thing, uh, electric car charge. I think that's something we should look at. We talked to once before about possibly we did. like over yeah. in Park area. Chuck and I have spoke about it. Uh, there's a there's a whole list of contractors you can contact. And basically, the research I've done with the grant money and stuff like that, it could cost the village very little or maybe even nothing. Uh, and you could actually get some, the village could actually get some income on this, you know, because they're activating the credit cards for people traveling and stuff like that. So you put a surcharge on top of that of a few percent or whatever, and then the village gets that, that money too. So I would like to move forward with that. Uh, me and Chuck would yeah. like to move forward. Yeah, yeah. Right. I, I've been scouting around as I get time, and I was at Destiny oh, a couple months ago, and they've got like four charging stations right as you, right at the edge of the parking lot. And this one gal was backing in right at, at the time, and it was kind of a nice looking car. And so I, I cautioned her that I, I'm not trying to hustle or anything, you know. I just I said, can I watch you hook up to this thing and see how it works? Well, the poor girl, it was a rental car, and the the units they've got there are called charge point that's the name of the company that does it you have to have the app on your phone for charge point to communicate with the unit before it would even worse the poor girl couldn't even hook it up and she didn't realize it but but it, it was kind of comical because another guy was backing in at the same time and he explained some of the stuff about it and he said at the thousand islands welcome center uh by the by the bridge up there's got a unit well, he pulled in there, his car was almost out of juice, pulled in there, and the unit wasn't working at the time, so he had to call a tow truck to get towed to a, a charging yeah. unit. So, okay. you, you know, this it, this stuff's pretty interesting once you get into it a little bit. And all these car companies, I mean, by, what, 3035 or whatever. Well, 2030 is going to be. Yeah, 2030, they're, they're saying all electric, so I think that's something we well, should. Well, you're talking about school buses. Though. Yeah, I, I think do. that's something we should look really? into. I mean, yeah. Like behind the common, like maybe over by Veterans Park. I don't know. We got to figure out where we want them first. The project of South Lewis did that school project, and they're, well, new park. One of the parking lots you go into now that I go into for a ball game, you've got a charge station. I don't know if it's the only one or not, but there's one there. Well, the county's got a couple up to DSS, too, but they're the slow chargers. These yeah. here, you know, you charge your car in a half an hour, so somebody coming through, stop, charge your car, and stop and have lunch or whatever. Well, there's three different rate chargers, basically. There's one that'll take all, all night at your house. And then you can hook up 240, that, that'll charge faster, but now they got one for 480, and, and, and one is a D, DC charger that, that, that'll charge up like half an hour. But e each one, it, you know, money rate is a different charge, too. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I thought the fastest one was like four hours, but. <laughs> well, it's a half hour, the fastest one. I think something just came through 
one of the emails too about grants being available for it. That was uh, Megan. Okay. The yeah. yeah. The county. As she, say, I think she's the one that sent the contractor this out too. Yeah. So. Okay. Well, so you and Chuck will look into that. Then. Mostly Chuck, but <laughs> me and Chuck. <laughs> no, I, I got quite a bit of info actually on the right. And I got some saved on my phone that I've been checking. Okay, anything else? So I guess that brings us down to uh, adjournment. I'll make the motion if there's no other business for adjournment. All right. I'll second. All in favor? All, All right. right.